Hey guys, uh, Mizzle Fast here with another chemistry video. Today we will be doing acids and bases part 2, KA, KB, and ICE tables. Ice tables. Um, if you haven't seen part 1, you might want to watch that first. I don't know, it's up to you, really. So, let's just get going. Part 2. Alright, so first K equals equilibrium constant. It's just a symbol we give to it. Such as M equals similarity. K equals equilibrium constant. We'll go over more of what that means later. And by later, I mean like 20 seconds. Ka is the equilibrium constant for a weak acid. Oh, acid. A. Oh, see that? <laughs> for once, something makes sense in chemistry, right? And anyway, Kb is equilibrium constant for a weak base. Yeah. Boom. B, B, A, A. And the main purpose of Ka and Kb is to find H plus concentration or OH minus, depending on if it's an acid or a base. If you haven't seen the first part, actually, I recommend you watch it first. Um, depending on if it's an acid or a base, we're trying to find H plus or OH minus, so we can ultimately find pH. That is the next video, though. We'll talk about pH next video. First, we need to know how to do Ka and Kb. And the reason we don't have, like, a K... A for a strong acid is because they dissolve completely like we went over in the last video they just one-way arrow the reaction goes one way there's no equilibrium it's it's bam bam boom bang done so like for example strong acid hydrochloric acid HCl when you put that in water it dissolves 100% into H plus and Cl minus therefore we can just use molar ratios like stoichiometry to find the concentration of the H plus Say, like, we had a 0 0.50 molar hydrochloric acid dissolved in a 1 liter beaker. That means that because of the molar ratio, well, first, because of molarity, we have 0 0.5 moles of HCl, because 0 0.5 molarity in 1 liter is 0 0.5 moles. If you don't know what I'm talking about, see the molarity video. And then using the molar ratio, because it's just one way it 100% goes, we can just say, okay, that means there's 0 0.50 moles of H plus in the solution, and we already have the concentration right there. That's all you need to do for strong acids. Easy. Weak acids, not as easy, because they don't dissociate completely, and we need to find the degree to which they don't dissociate, which is essentially what Ka is. It's how much of the amount of weak acid you put in a beaker of water will actually split up, and at what point at equilibrium, you know, we went over that last time. So it's a, the point where equilibrium will happen, essentially. Good? Is that clear? I know that was a lot to take in, but I hope so. Moving on. The general equation for a weak acid is HA, double arrow, because it goes both ways, because it establishes an equilibrium. HA, H plus, plus A minus, where A is obviously not an element, because it's the general equation. Well, it's an element, but I mean, it's not like a specific element. It's just representing any element, if that made sense. Like, there's no A element. There's no apple element. It's just a general thing to say any element. For example, like here, HF. Oh, it's going to do that stupid arrow thing. Oh, my gosh, I hate that. Don't you guys think those arrows are ugly? And then it doesn't even do it with the other one. That looks terrible. But anyway, H plus plus F minus. In this case... A is fluorine, because it's just the general equation. Anyway, how do we find Ka from this general equation? Ka is concentration of H plus times concentration of A minus divided by concentration of HA. These brackets mean concentration, and concentration is molarity. Like I said, check out the molarity video if you don't know what's up with molarity. Okay, let's just do an example problem of setting up Ka, which shouldn't be too hard. A solution of hydrofluoric acid is prepared. Write the acid ionization expression, Ka. So the equation would be HF, double arrow, H plus, plus F minus. And the Ka expression would then be H plus times F minus over HF concentration. Cool. Now, how do we actually find what to put here 
instead of just letters. We actually need to find numbers. Whoa! Ice tables. Ice, ice, baby. Dun, 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 dun. Down, down, down. Anyway, sorry. Vanilla ice, y'all. Initial change equilibrium. That is what ICE stands for. Initial change equilibrium. Boo, ba, ba, da, ba, ba. Uh, it's as you may have inferred from the name ice tables. It's a table. I'll show you an example of one in a second that I made. First, though, how do you set it up? The very, very first thing you do is you need to write a balanced chemical equation. Then you need to make some columns. I'll show you that in a sec. But first, write a balanced chemical equation. So, you know, I'll just do an example. HA, double arrow, H plus plus A minus. A sample consisting of 0 0.50 moles of HA is placed into one liter beaker of water. At equilibrium, the sample of HA is known to be 0 0.350 moles. Calculate the Ka of the weak acid. So the Ka is H plus times A minus over HA. That is the expression. And now you set up the ice table. So as you can see here, I just made a little table with the balance chemical equation over an up and down thingy row column. We're just going to call it the ups. So you write the balance chemical equation, and for each compound or element in said equation, they get their own ups. So HA gets its own ups, H plus gets its own ups, and A minus gets its own ups. And then, left and right, you're going to have three. You're going to have initial, change, and equilibrium. Cool. Step two, fill in the initials that the problem gives you. The problem will always give you an initial. So a sample consisting of zero, oh, there it is, 0 0.50 moles of HA is placed into one liter. Remember, these have to be in concentration. So in this case, it is, in fact, just 0 0.50 molarity because it's in a one liter beaker. So you just write that in, 0 0.50 molarity. And then that's the initial of the HA, because that's what the problem says. You have HA, you have like a powder, and you put it in water. Initially, you're going to have zero H+, plus because the reaction has not started yet. None of the HA has broken up into H+, plus and A-. minus. So H+, plus is going to be zero, and A- minus initial is also going to be zero. Cool, that's one down already, just, just like that. Two more to go. Use molar ratio to put x in with the right coefficient in the change. And by that, I mean you got the balanced chemical equation up here. So the change, we're just going to use x because we don't know what the change is yet. So you just represent it with an x. So change here, you have HA, and you're going to lose some HA because it is dissolving to form H plus and A minus. So you're going to put a minus x, and it's just a minus x because it's 1 ha. If it were 2 ha, it'd be minus 2x. But it's just minus x, so put that in there. And then over here, you're going to be getting h plus as the reaction goes on. Initially, you had none of it because there was just none. All you had is ha. It didn't break up yet. And then when you put in the water, it breaks up into h plus and a minus. So you're going to get plus x amount of H plus because of the molar ratio, 1 to 1. And you're going to get plus x of A minus because of the molar ratio, 1 to 1. Okay, then use the data to give in to fill in the equilibrium column. Let's go back to the problem. At equilibrium, the sample of HA is known to be 0 .3, 0 0.350 moles. Right there, that's what we need. At equilibrium, the sample of HA is known to be 0 0.350 moles. So you write that in for equilibrium for HA. So 0 0.50 moles, that was the molarity, that was the initial. Then we just filled in the change of minus X. And the problem told us that at equilibrium, the concentration will be 0 0.350 molarity. Do you see that? Do you see what I see? Look at that. We can now solve for X because we know that the difference between 0.50 molarity and 0.350 molarity is x because, well, we just filled that in. So that's the next step. you got to solve for x, which is simple. 0.50 minus x equals 0.350. x equals 0.15. And therefore, since h plus and a minus's equilibrium values are x, 
they are both 0 0.150 at equilibrium. Because remember, we decided that over the course of the reaction, we will gain plus x amount of H plus and A minus. So the equal at equilibrium, it will be positive 1x, because that's all that happened. You started with 0, and you gained x. Therefore, it will be x. And we just solved for the value of x, so we can fill those two parts in. Yay! ba doo ba doo ba -doo. And now, we have the entire equilibrium column, row, whatever thing filled up, and we know the Ka expression. That's the very first thing we wrote right there. The Ka expression. Now you just fill um in. So Ka equals blah, 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 which is 0 0.15 molarity times 0 0.5 molarity divided by 0 0.350 molarity. All right, so let's just uh, do this out here. 0 0.150 times equals whatever divided by 0 0.50. And the answer is 0 0.064 is our equilibrium constant, is our Ka. Jeez, I'm tired of doing that problem. Ugh. So yeah, obviously, these are long and painful and not fun. But, you know, you do them. Actually... I kind of like them. As you just go and get better at them, you're just so quick at them. It's like boom, bang, bong, done. But they are they are long. And um, KB is the exact same way. I'm not going to go through that again. Except the general equation. Of course, it's not the same because it's a base, not an acid. It's BOH, double arrow, B plus, plus OH minus. All right. One more thing. Then we're done with part two of part three. Then we're done with part two of a three-part topic. Well, I split into three parts. Yeah, anyway, KW. KW is the equilibrium constant of plain water. If you have a beaker of plain water, it's going to have the equilibrium equilibrium constant of KW. And KW is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. It's a given. It's a constant. We know it. We don't have to calculate it. It's there. It's proven. It's happy. Just let it be. Let it be, Johnny. Don't Die, pony boy, stay golden. Pony boy? Anyone know what I'm talking about? No? Just me who had to read that book? Okay, I kind of like that book. Anyway, back to chemistry. I'm all over the place. KW equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. And it also equals KA times KB. So, if we're given KA, we can find KB because of this handy equation right here. Given KB, we can find KA as well. It's a pretty basic equation, so let's just do... One quick example and call it good. The Ka for solution of acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the bottom sixth. What is the Kb for the solution? So we got Kw times... Yeah, I just kind of typed this out before I started recording because typing takes a while and I don't want this video to be like 20 minutes. So Kw equals Ka times Kb. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th is Kw, so we just substitute those out because they are the same thing. This equals this. And then we put in the given Ka, which is that, times Kb. And you solve for Kb by just, you know, dividing. Because if you divide, that isolates the Kb. And there's your answer. Just put that in your fancy calculator. I don't think this can do minuses. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you like this video, share it with anybody you think needs help on the subject. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or visit my website. See you guys next time.